Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about what do we do with forces at an angle. So, so far in class we've been applying Newton's second law um, constantly um, and we've been given forces that are pretty convenient that just end up um, on our x-axis or on our y-axis. So by the end of today, I hope to give you some tools that you can use to help you deal with forces at an angle that don't lie directly on your x-axis or your y-axis. So let's get started. Um, we have a picture here um, that is uh, this guy Aaron here and he's pulling a sled over very smooth snow so the fact that this is very smooth snow um, let's say that friction is negligible here so we won't be considering friction and he's exerting a force of 80 newtons at an angle of 50 degrees above the ground so what I've done here is I've drawn in a y-axis and an x-axis and now I've drawn this force at an angle here. Um, in the picture underneath this line I've drawn, you can actually see uh, the rope that he's pulling. And so I think this is a great example to start out with of a force at an angle. Okay, and then we're given the combined mass of these little kids, and we're asked to find the acceleration of the sled. And we're kind of stuck because we don't know how to apply Newton's second law to forces at an angle. I mean, even when we've had complex force diagrams so far, we take the net force in the x direction and find the acceleration in the x, and then the net force in the y and find the acceleration in the y. So what we need to do here is think about what happens when you pull something at an angle or when you push a stroller or shopping cart at an angle. So any vector that's directed in two dimensions can be thought of as having an influence in the x direction and an influence in the y direction. And so what I've done here at the bottom is I've drawn in this vector, let's call it v, okay? This vector v can be substituted with two vectors, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. And we call these components. So for every two-dimensional vector, we can break it down into its x part, or x component, and its y part, or y component. When we have vectors at an angle, we're going to try and use all of the math that we've learned in school so far to transform that vector into its x and y parts. So we're interested in finding out the magnitude of the x component and the magnitude of the y component. So for example, if you have a vector that's directed northwest, we know that there's going to be a westward component and a northward component. We can kind of break that down. Okay, so what I've done here is I have this um, really cute picture of a dog here and this dog is being pulled by a chain and the force of the chain on the dog is 60 newtons and we know that this force is being directed at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal so what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw in some of the features here that are given so Every time we deal with forces at an angle, we want to assign our y and our x-axis to the problem. So I've done that here. And now I have this blue force vector, which represents the force of the chain on the dog. And I'm told that the angle between the x-axis and this force at an angle is 40 degrees. So what I can do is I can sketch in the x component, which I'm just going to name f with a subscript x and then I can sketch in my Y component and I'm just going to name that F and a subscript Y. Now notice that your X and Y components are perpendicular to one another and make a right angle. So I'm just going to draw that right angle in. Now if this were math class and you had a problem like this, um, I'm sure that your mind kind of switches on to this Sokotoa mnemonic. Okay, so we know this from trigonometry where the so stands for the sine, right? The sine of any angle is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And the cosine of any angle is a ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. 
and the tangent of any angle is a ratio of the opposite side you know, divided by the adjacent side. So if we think about this problem here and we think about this 40 degrees that we're given, relative to 40 degrees, the given vector, the 60 newtons, is our hypotenuse. So I'm just going to tag this up as the hypotenuse. And our Fy here, our Y component, is the opposite side relative to that 40 degree angle. And our X component is the adjacent side relative to that 40 degree angle. So in a traditional um, math class, we would be able to find the X component if we needed to. We would think about what we know. And we know the hypotenuse. So that means that we can use either sine or cosine to solve for the unknown. If we're looking for the X component, then what we're looking for is the adjacent side. So if I use the trigonometric function of the cosine of the angle, and just as a side note, guys, in physics, um, a lot of times an unknown angle is given this variable. It looks a little funny, this symbol here. It's known as the Greek symbol theta. And theta is uh, what we use for unknown angles much of the time in physics. I mean, it could be uh, given a variable like x or a, b, c. Uh, I mean, you can call it George, whatever you want to call it, but usually it's given as theta. So we know that the cosine of any angle theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Now in this case, right, we can find this by doing cosine of 40 degrees. It's going to equal the x component all over the vector that we're trying to resolve here, the 60 newtons. And now we can solve for that x component. It ends up being 60 newtons times the cosine of 40 degrees. Okay, And I'll solve for that in a moment. If you wanted to solve for your y component, you'd be looking at the sine of that angle. Because the sine of the angle allows you to use the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, our opposite side is the y component. And that would be divided by the given 60. And the f of y simply equals 60 newtons times the sine, 40 degrees. So let me just grab my calculator, and we can solve for both of these. OK, and so it ends up being that our x component can be found as 46 newtons, and our y component as 39 newtons. Okay, so that's how we would normally solve for uh, these types of problems in math class. But I'd like to do something a little more challenging. I'd like for you to think about, um, just in general, can we come up with a math model that helps us find the x component of any vector? I'm using the symbol f here for forces because today we're talking about um, in the context of forces, but really, um, a way that we can find the x component of any vector and a way that we can find the y component of any vector when we're given the angle between that x-axis and the vector we're trying to resolve. So see if you can come up with a math model to find the x component and a math model to find the y component in terms of f, theta, and then any of the trigonometric functions that you know. So please press pause on the video and try your best at developing a math model for each one. And then click back to check your work. Okay, think you got it? Let's check. If we're given theta, again, the y component is the side opposite of the angle between the x-axis and the vector we're trying to resolve, f and your x component is the adjacent side. OK, so thinking about trying to find the x component would require us to find the cosine of theta, and that would give the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So again, here's your cosine of theta. The adjacent side happens to be your x component, and the hypotenuse is that force vector you're trying to resolve. 
So in the end, the x component is equal to the vector you're trying to resolve times the cosine of that angle between the x-axis and the vector you're trying to resolve. Let's see if we can do the same thing for the y component. This time we'd be looking at the sine of the angle because that'll produce a ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Our opposite side in this case is our y component. And so if we solve for fy, we end up with f times the sine of theta. If you came up with these, nice work. These can be used now basically forever as long as, and I think this is a really important part to this, um, these math models are only true when the angle that we're working with, theta here, um, is equal to the angle between the x-axis and the vector you're trying to resolve. Very important. Now, I mean, most people would say, well, you know, if, if I am given this angle up here, you know, no big deal. I know that the angle that I'm looking for, the angle between the x-axis and f, would just be 90 minus that second angle. Um, and, you know, of course that's correct. Uh, one of the neat things about physics is that you can use all of the math that you've learned up until now. Uh, there's a continuation of this video. There's a part two, two forces at an angle, that'll deal with how to solve problems related to forces at an angle. So please make sure to click on the link below so that you can get to that second video. I hope you found this helpful to get you started with forces at an angle, and I hope that you have a great day.